Hello everyone and welcome to this new video in the Hackerish YouTube channel. If you're new here, welcome to the family. I hope you find the hacking content you want to learn hacking and bug bounty hunting. And if you remember, for those who have been following the channel, we've talked about several hacking websites that you can use to boost your skills in hacking and learn new techniques. And one of them is rootme.org. And so I thought that it would be good to demonstrate how the platform works by solving a challenge. So let's get started. So normally when you go to rootme.org, you are prompted with a landing page, but you can authenticate in the top right corner and just let me change the language for you which you can simply do here so as you can see it supports uh, many languages French German Spanish Russian and English and let's get started with the first challenge here actually it's the only challenge that we're going to solve since the philosophy of rootme is to not publish solutions to help people really try their best to solve the challenges themselves and learn on their own, which I think you'd agree is far better than just looking up the solution on the internet. So I'm just going to select a web server challenge. As you can see, there are many, many categories. And if you go there, you would see a list of all the challenges. There you go. And I'm just going to target a simple one just to give you an idea how the platform works and to avoid any problems with RootMe regarding solving or publishing solutions. And as you can see, there's a huge list of challenges that range from very easy to hard fourth level. So let's get started with the first one here, uh, which is HTTP IP restriction bypass. Now, when you enter to the challenge, you have the number of points that you're going to collect um, and you have some information about the challenge. So here it says only local users will be able to access the web page. And this is typical in intranet uh, corporate environments maybe. So you would have the application restricting access to only certain people that are that reside in a certain subnet. And the statement says here, dear colleagues, we're now managing connections to the internet using private IP addresses. So it's no longer necessary to log in with the username and password when you are already connected to the internal company network. Right away, you can sniff some security vulnerabilities here because trust should not be based on the IP address, rather it should based, be based on proper authentication. In this case, username and password could be okay, but I would suggest using 2FA as well or multi-factor authentication. So let's hit the start button and it redirects you or creates a new tab with a path to the challenge. And as you can see here, your IP cannot belong to the LAN. And so we need to enter our login and password but we don't have those. And we know that the web application bases its logic on the source IP address. So what we can do here is tamper with some known HTTP headers. If you Google X forwarded for HTTP header, for example, you can see that it is used for identifying the originating IP address of a client connecting to web server through a HTTP proxy or load balancer. In short, this is the header that is being used by the proxy to know which client to return the response to. And we are going to attempt to use that in order to bypass the restrictions. So as you can see, the usage here is very simple. You just use the HTTP header name with the IP address that you want to tell the web proxy that you're originating the request from. So let's copy this and try our luck with the challenge. So instead of playing with the requests in Burp Suit, let's do something simpler this time and just use the web browser. Right click, click on inspect, go to network, refresh the page, and here is our request. But uh, since I'm on Chrome, I don't have this feature. For those of you who use Firefox, you can do that right from the developer tools. So let's fire burp. All right, let's configure our 
browser to talk to Burp and then refresh the page. And here we're just going to disable interception. If we go to HTTP history tab, we can find the same request that we saw in the developer tools. Here is our request. So if we right click and send it to the repeater as usual, we can start tampering with our request. So let's add this header by introducing a new line in our request and changing this to maybe localhost, which can be translated to the IP address 127.0.0.1 and send the request. And as you can see in the response, we have your IP 127.0.0.1 do not belong to the LAN. Right away, we can see that the application is indeed taking the X forwarded for header and evaluating it. Let's just render the page for people who don't maybe understand HTML. And here you can see the response. Your IP da -da -da -da, do not belong. Well, this is a typo, dot not belong. It should be does not belong. But anyway, we're not here in a grammar lesson. So let's move on. All right. So even though the challenge here says that we're now managing connections to internet using I private IP addresses or local, only local users will be able to access the page, we are not able to access that page. So what we can do is maybe use private IP addresses. Now, these are well-known IP address ranges. So if you Google private IP ranges, you can see that right away, Google gives you the information you want. We have three classes, class A, 10.0.0.0, WAC 8, and the, the other two. So let's use a range, an IP address from the class B range, for example. Let's put it here, remove just some white spaces for formatting and choose one IP address by removing the zero from the end and replacing it with one. If we send this, we get well done. Validation password is, but what happens if I change this to maybe dot two? Same thing. That's because this is a private address. Now let's try 10.0.0.1. Same thing. We get a response saying that we are indeed authenticated to the internet. So as you can see, authentication based on user input, in this case, the X forwarded for header is not a security best practice and it allows authentication bypass. So let's grab the flag and validate it. So this is the password, let's send it and well done. We get 10 points. So this is it. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned how to use the RootMe platform, at least for the challenges part. I forgot to mention that you have references for each challenge. So in this case, we have uh, the path to the RFC of uh, private internets. And I guess here you can find the ranges that we've been talking about, which are here. So definitely check out the references that are included in each challenge because they allow you to learn more about how you can solve the challenges. Okay, so until the next video, stay curious, keep learning, and go find some bugs.